A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytanir rajim. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. As-salatu wa as-salamu ala muhammadin wa alihi al-tayibin al-tahirin. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Laylatul Jum'ah Mubarak and Dhul Hijjah Mubarak. What an awesome month. And we'll talk about it. But first, we're going to look at the Surah of Quran that we will recite today from Juz 29. And today we're going to look at Surah Al-Qiyamah. Surah Al-Qiyamah is Surah number 75 of the Quran. It has 42 ayat and it's a Makkan Surah. Let's look at the benefits of recitation first. So, it's safety from heart ailments. Not only the physical heart, but even the one that hurts when somebody says something, somebody hurts you. Recite Surah Al-Qiyamah. Um, one who recites Surah Al-Qiyamah will be raised with radiance on the day of Qiyamah. There's increase in sustenance. It protects life. It's generally protection. And if you read Surah Al-Qiyamah, you'll be liked by people. And that's what the Quran is all about. Because you turn yourself, you behave, your behavior changes. You become a good person. Right, so what is the focus? It's a graphic picture of the day of Qiyamah. Um, like if we look, we've divided this, this surah into four sections. So in the first section, you see where the day of Qiyamah will be, where the eyes will be startled, the moon will darken, and it will fuse with the sun. There'll be no place to run to. The human being will meet his or her deeds and his legacy. And despite excuses, we will be our own evidence basically but there's a, a word in here i want you to remember for example allah starts off by saying la uqsimu bi yawmil qiyamah la means everything you're thinking about forget it because what i say here allah is saying is right so forget about all your theories about what the hereafter will be nothing he says i'm telling you what it's going to be like and then he says i swear by the day of resurrection and I also swear, he says, by the soul, that, that guilty soul, you know, the one that is telling you off all the time. When you do something wrong, it sort of tells you you're not supposed to do that. And he says, that's the soul that I'm swearing by because it's related to Qiyamah. You're accountable to this soul and accountable to Allah at Qiyamah. But the ayah I want to talk about is where he says, does the human being think that we will not be able to put all his bones together? We'll be able to make him up to his fingertips. You, you I recognize the word banana. Yeah. So the English word banana comes from the Arabic word banana, which is finger, fat finger, because the banana was the shape of a finger. Well, a large one, but it's the shape of a finger. And so they use the same Arabic word to call it banana. Anyway, so the first section is the day of Qiyamah and everything that happens on it. Section two says, you see, the Prophet really wanted everybody to learn the Quran, to internalize the Quran. He didn't want any bit of it lost. And Allah says really, really beautifully, he says, Inna alayna jam'ahu wa Qur'ana. It is upon us to collect it, to put it together and make sure, we will make sure it's there. Don't worry, it's okay. Section three, contrast the smiling faces and the sad faces on the day of Qiyamah. For example, Allah, and when we recite it, I hope you will remember it, There will be some faces on that day which will be bright, lit up, you know, like, oh my goodness, like that. But then he says, There will be some faces that will be so sad. Because they will know what they have done. You don't want to be amongst those. We're going to pray to Allah to be of those who are smiling, lots of radiance. And finally, the last section talks about how all of us are going to die. And every human being has been created with purpose. So if you have your Qur'ans, I've got my dad's Qur'an as usual. If you have your Qur'an, go to Surah Al-Qiyamah, that's Surah number 75, and let's read it together. Are you ready? Okay, let's recite it together. And you remember how we recite it, right? You remember? La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. Okay. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. La uqsimu bi yawmil qiyamah. 
ولا أقسم بالنفس اللوامة أيحسب الإنسان على النجمع عظاما بلا قادرين على أن نسوي بنانا بل يريد الإنسان ليفجر عماما يسعل أيان يوم القيامة فإذا برق البصر وخسف القمر وجمع الشمس والقمر يقول الإنسان يومئذ أين المفر كلا لا وزر إلى ربك يومئذ المستقر ينبع الإنسان يومئذ بما قدم وأخر وللإنسان على نفسه بصيرة ولو ألقى معازيرة لا تحرق به لسانك لتعجل به إن علينا جمعه وقرعانا فإذا قرعناه فاتبع قرعانا ثم إن علينا بيانا كلا بل تحبون العاجلة وتذرون الآخرة وجوه يومئذ ناظرة إلى ربها ناذرة ووجوه يومعذ باصرة تظن أن يفعل بها فاقرة كلا إذا بلغت التراقي وقيل من راق وظن أنه الفراق والتفت الساق بالساق إلى ربك يومئذ المساق فلا صدق ولا صلى ولكن كذب وتولى ثم ذهب إلى أهله يتمطى أولى لك فأولى ثم أولى لك فأولى أيحسب الإنسان أن يترك سدى علم يكن نطفة من مني يمنى ثم كان علقة فخلك فسوى فجعل منه الزوجين الذكر والأنثى أليس ذلك بقادر على أن يحيي الموتى صدق الله العلي العظيم وصدق الرسول الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين اللهم صل على محمد وعال محمد so now we're going to look at Dua al-Kumil, as we normally do. And let's look at where we left off. Now, last week when we looked at Dua al-Kumil, we looked at a bit, or we're telling Allah, that I've crossed these barriers. I've actually done wrong because I followed what my soul told me. And I really have disobeyed you. So now let's see what we're telling him. So we tell him, فَلَكَ الْحَمْدُ عَلَيَّ فِي جَمِيءِ ذَلِكَ So for you is praise and gratitude in everything. That's how we start. For you is hamd, praise and gratitude in everything. وَلَا حُجَّةَ لِي فِي مَا جَرَى عَلَيَّ فِيهِ قَذَاعُكَ I have no justification. In other words, it is justifiable for, for you to do to work out my destiny because of what I've done. I can't sit and make excuses for anything. Even it's you see your wisdom in the tests that I go through is probably because of what I've done too. So you're saying it's justified. I'm not complaining. And I love this bit. Because you say, and I definitely and I'm turning to you. I'm coming to you. Who are you going to? Ya ilahi, oh my God. Ba'da taqsiri wa israfi ala nafsi. After all the shortcomings and all the wastefulness against myself, all the awful things I've done to myself, the sins I've committed, things that are not right. And now we tell him nine things. How many? Nine. Nine things we tell him. We tell him mu'tadiran. I am apologetic. Really sorry for what I've done. Nadiman, I regret what I've done. See, there's a difference in being sorry and regretting. It means when I regret something, I think, I'm trying not to do this ever again. Mun kasiran, I'm so broken. Kasara means to break. I'm broken with what I've done. 
mustaqilan. I acknowledge, I actually confess, this is what I've done. Mustaghfiran, I'm asking you for forgiveness. Muniban, I'm turning to you, I'm repentant, I want to turn back to you. Muqirran, I confirm these are my sins and that I have done them. Muda'inan, I submit to you. Mu'tarifan, I lay everything out, I confess everything to you. So basically, this point of the dua, we're telling him, I know what I've done. I know I've done wrong. We don't make excuses. I've laid it all out. This is what I've done. And we say, La ajidu mafarram mimma kana minni. There is, I can't escape. I don't find anywhere to run away to from what I've done. Wala mafsan atawajahu ilayhi fi amri ghayra kabulika usri. I don't find a refuge. Wala mafsan is I don't find refuge either. And then atawajahu ilayhi. Other than you, fi amri in everything I've done, ghayra kabulika usri. Other than you accepting my excuse. I'm putting it in front of you and I'm telling you this is what I've done. And then we tell him, the only way I'll get away. Is if you accept my excuse and وَإِذْ خَالِكَ إِيَّايَ فِي سَعْتٍ مِّنْ رَحْمَتِكَ And that's so amazing. We're saying, if you admit me into the realm of your compassion. So that's the only way I'm going to be able to get away with these sins. So feeling, being sorry, regretting them, asking for forgiveness putting them right repentant means when you do toba you're going to put it right and then say i'm really really sorry i'm trying really hard not to do it again and to confess them only to allah to nobody else so if you've got your dual kamel let's at least read up to here okay you go on all right let's start Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad Allahumma inni as'aluka bi rahmatika allati wasi'at kulla shay' wa bi quwwatika allati qahrata biha kulla shay' wa khada'a laha kullu shay' wa dhalla laha kullu shay' وبجبروتك التي غلبت بها كل شيء وبعزتك التي لا يقوم لها شيء وبعظمتك التي ملعت كل شيء وبسوتانك الذي على كل شيء وبوجهك الباقي بعد فناء كل شيء وبأسمائك التي ملعت أركان كل شيء وبعلمك الذي أهات بكل شيء وبنور وجهك الذي عذا عليه كل شيء يا نور يا قدوس يا أول الأولين ويا آخر الآخرين اللهم اغفر لي الذنوب التي تهتك العسم اللهم اغفر لي الذنوب التي تنزل النقم اللهم اغفر لي الذنوب التي تغير النعم اللهم اغفر لي الذنوب التي تهبس الدعاء اللهم اغفر لي الذنوب التي تقطع الرجاء اللهم اغفر لي الذنوب التي تنزل البلاء اللهم اغفر لي كل ذنب اذنبت وكل خطيئه اقطعتها اللهم اني اتقرب اليك بذكرك واستشفي بك الى نفسك واسالك بجودك ان تدنيني من قربك وان توزعني شكرك وان تلهمني ذكرك اللهم إني أسألك سؤال قاضي متذلل خاشع أن تسامحني وترحمني وتجعلني بقسمك راضيا قانيا وفي جميع الأحوال متواضعا اللهم وأسألك سؤال من اشتدت فاقته وأنزل بك عند الشدائد عاجته وعظم فيما عندك رغبة اللهم عظم سلطانك وعلى مكانك وخفي مكرك وظهر أمرك وغلب قحرك 
وجرت قدرته ولا يمكن الفرار من حكومتك اللهم لا عجد لذنوبي غافرا ولا لقبائه ساطرا ولا لشيء من عملي القبيه بالحسن مبدلا غيرك لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك وبحمدك ظلمت نفسي وتجرعت بجهلي وسقنت إلى قديم ذكرك لي ومنك عليه اللهم مولاي كم من قبيل سترت وكم من فاضح من البلاء قلت وكم من إثار وقيت وكم من مكروه دفعت وكم من ثناء جميل لست أحلا له نشرت اللهم عظم بلاي وعفرت بي سوء حالي وقصرت بي أعمالي وقعدت بي أغلالي وحبسني النفع بعد عملي وخدعتني الدنيا بغرورها ونفسي بجنايتها ومتالي يا سيدي فاسألك بيزتك لا يحجب عن قد دعائي سوء عملي وفعالي ولا تفضحني بخفي ما اتلعت عليه من سري ولا تعاجلني بالأقوبة على ما عملته في خلواتي من سوء فعلي وإساعتي ودوام تفريتي وجهالتي وكثرتي شحواتي وغفلتي وكن اللهم بعزتك لي في كل الأحوال رعوفا وعلي في جميع الأمور يتوفا إلهي وربي من لي غيرك أسأله كشف ضري والنذر في أمري إلهي ومولايا أجريت علي حكما اتبعت فيه هوى نفسي ولم أحترس فيه من تزيين عدوي فغرني بما حوى وأسعده على ذلك القضاء فتجاوزت بما جرى علي من ذلك بعض حدودك وخالفت بعض أوامرك فلك الحمد علي في جميع ذلك ولا حجة لي فيما جرى علي فيه قذاوك وعلزمني حكمك وبلاوك وقد أتيتك يا إلهي بعد تقصيري وإسرافي على نفسي معتذرا نادما منكسرا مستقيلا مستغفرا منيبا مقرا مذئنا معترفا لا عجد مفرا مما كان مني ولا مفزعا أتوجه إليه في أمري غير قبولك عذري وإدخالك إياي في سعة من رحمتك اللهم سل على محمد وعال محمد Right now we're going to look at the month of Dhul Hijjah Oh my goodness How awesome is this month and um, I was looking or I found this this quote I think it was sent to me by so many people as well and it's from Sayyid Sistani's um, network and it says how great is the month of the Hijjah Prophet Musa was on the mountain of Tur do you remember it's still our rain kal- kalimiyah the 40 days and he was talking to Allah so he says Prophet Musa was on the mountain of Tur Say the Fatima got married to Imam Ali on the first of the Hijjah. Do you know that? How awesome. So Musa on tour, Fatima to the house of Ali. This is the month in Prophet Ibrahim has this great sacrifice of sacrificing Ismail and Allah replaces it with, you're right, okay. He replaces it with the sheep. And the Prophet, what happened? Do you know what happened on the 18th of the Hijjah? That's right, that's Eid al-Qadir. The Prophet appoints Imam Ali, so Muhammad and Ali as, as the Imam. Ahlul Kisa on Mubahila, so the Eid of Mubahila, and Imam Hussein is on his way to Karbala to bring us the freedom, the freedom of truth as such. So many things happened in this month. It is phenomenal. So let's see what happens in these 10 days. So Sheikh Abbas Kummi, he writes in Mufati al Jinan that if you recite 
this namaz in the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah, then it is like going for Hajj. And you know in lockdown we're not able to go to Hajj. We all know that, right? So let's see what happens here, what he says. He says, these are the 10 nights in which you will recite this Salah. So let's go over this Salah, okay? Between Maghrib and Isha, you recite two rakats of Salah. Can you hear me properly? Okay. In the first rakat, you recite Alhamd and Surat Al-Ikhlas. Second rakat, same thing. But after Surat Al-Ikhlas, you recite the 142nd ayah of Surat Al-A'raf. 7, 1, 4, 2. Do you want to recite it with me? Okay. It is, وَوَعَدْنَا مُوسَى ثَلَاثِينَ لَيْلَةً We promised, we appointed Musa a time of 30 nights with us on the mountain of Tur. وَأَتْمَمْنَاهَا And we finished it, we completed it. بِأَشْرٍ With 10. فَتَمَّا مِقَاتُ رَبِّهِ أَرْبَعِينَ لَيْلَةً So the time with his Rabb was 40 nights. So this is the extra 10 nights. وَقَالَ مُوسَى And Musa said لِأَخِي هَارُونَ To his brother Harun اخلفني, Take my place Be my Khalifa Be my representative فِي قَوْمِ With my people وَأَسْلِحْ وَلَا تَدْتَبِعْ سَبِيلَ الْمُفْسِدِينَ And make peace Act well Don't follow the way of the mischief makers And this is the ayah we recite Every day I'll repeat again If we do this In the ten nights of the first 10 nights of the Hijjah It's like going for Hajj It's really awesome You try to do that At least on one of the nights Two rakats Fatiha, Ikhlas, I 142 of Surah Al-Araf. And the thawab, the thawab of that is like going for Hajj. It's just like Hajj at home. We can do that. Also, the Prophet said, Allah forgives the mistakes of whoever recites Surah Al-Fajr on the 10 nights. Yep. Surah Al-Fajr. Which surah number is it? Do you know? Surah number 89. And you know it says, Wal Fajr wa layalin ashr. I swear by the dawn and the 10 nights. Now, it could be any of the 10 nights. It could be the last 10 nights of the month of Ramadan. It could be the first 10 nights of Muharram. But mostly, this, this surah is known for the 10, first 10 nights of the month of Dhul Hijjah. And we're here in Dhul Hijjah. So we've got to recite it. Okay. Now, what we've got to do also in this month is prepare for the day of Arafah. It is phenomenal, this day. So that will be the 9th of Dhul Hijjah. You work out when it is. For some people, it may be... Thursday, some people would be Friday, but it doesn't matter. It's the 9th of Dhul Hijjah. Okay, so let's see what we have here. On the day of Imam, let me tell you a little bit about Arafah. So on the day of Arafah, Imam Zainal Abdeen, that's Imam Sajjad al-Islam, he heard somebody um, asking somebody else for something, heard the voice of a beggar, and he turned to him and he said, you're asking from other people on this day, on the day of Arafat? Is that what you're doing? Today is, if you asked Allah to change make a change in a baby in the womb to become righteous, he would do that. That's how awesome the day of Arafah is. The Prophet said, the best dua is the dua of the day of Arafah. Imam Sadiq says, the day of Arafah is the day of the forgiveness of sins. My goodness. It's like a blue cross sale of vibes that facilitate the reaching of what we want. So we've got to prepare from today because it's next week, end of next week. Okay, so what are we going to do? We'll talk about more about it next Thursday. But maybe you could take a piece of paper Divided it into four sides, four sections, four squares, right? Physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. And write down what you want to be at the end of the Hijjah, 1441 or 1442, but I'd rather 1441. And then do quarters, quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, quarter four, until the end of next year. Set your targets, because life is about living, loving, learning and leaving a legacy and these are the four things you've got to focus on it doesn't matter if you say well i want to be more fit i want to walk a little bit more i want to swim a little bit more that's your physical i want to learn a little more i want to learn a new language i want to read the quran i want to learn the quran i want to be nicer to people and have a bigger heart not this heart that's always being oh crazy no 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 i want to love people a little bit more all these things and then wipe the slate clean on the day of arafah you know how you do that? You start now. Maybe you write a few emails, you send a few messages, you send a few cards, you ask for forgiveness. Because those are the hurdles that stop us from getting to be our best. And finally, before we get to next Thursday or next Friday, read and study the Dua of Arafah of Imam Hussein. My goodness, it's so amazing. 
So, 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 so amazing. Remember the Prophet said, the Hajj is Arafah because of the abundance of God's Rahmah, His compassion and forgiveness of every sin on that day. People used to wait for the day of Arafah so that they could say, I'm really sorry. Start with a clean slate on that day. It really is really, really important. So besides your paper with the four parts in it, I mean, make the longest du'a list you've ever made. Just pages and pages and pages and pages of it. Just write everything from the biggest to the smallest. You could put macro and micro, you know. Um, Allah tells Prophet Musa, Musa, ask me for the salt you put in your dough. Ask me for the shoelaces that you need for your shoes. So everything, ask. Because when we write down a du'a, we're actually looking at it. We're making it real and we work towards it. We have some hairy fairy ideas in our head. It doesn't work. We need to be able to manage it and write it down. So if you look at the du'a of Arafah, I'm going to use that as our base. Imam, te Imam teaches us to ask for Iman, to ask for radiance, Nur. You know what Nur is? Nur is divine energy, energy which gives us perception, which gives us some sort of, a, if I can say, direction to follow. Um, we ask to take all sorrows away, to cover our shortcomings, to drive away demons. Now, I know we think these are monsters, but this is suspicion, laziness, losing interest. And once you have made your dua list and it, you know, you've, you, it must be long, you've got to seal it. And the way to seal it either is with Asma'ul Husna. And if we look at what Imam teaches us right at the end in the dua, he says, he seals it with Asma'ul Husna. He says right at the end of dua al-Arafah, Ya Asma As-Sami'een, O the one who listens. Ya Absar al oh O the one who sees everything. Ya Asr al hasibin O the one who is the accountant. And the one who is the most compassionate. We say, Salli ala Muhammadin wa ala Muhammad. Send blessings on the Prophet and the Ahlul Bayt. Wa Allahumma. And I ask you, O oh Allah, Haja, this what I want. Haja tillati in ataytaniha lam yadurrani ma manatani. It's something I want. If you give it to me, Nobody can take it away from me. Wa in manataniha, if you do not give it to me, you refuse it. Lam yan fa'ani ma atayani. Even if I do have it, it will not benefit. And then we ask for one thing. I need you to remember that because all week you're gonna think about that. We said, As aluka, I ask you, Ya Allah, and this is Imam Hussein teaching us. Fakaka rakabati minanar. I ask you to free my neck from the fire. That means I don't want to be upset or agitated in the world or in the hereafter. Read the dua. At least try and read the last bit here. And the secret here is really in that for a small husna. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go over it with you again. Remember ears. Remember we said asma samin. You remember that, right? So remember ears. What else are you gonna remember? You're gonna remember eyes, ears, eyes, numbers, because he was the accountant, and hugs. Can you remember that? Four things. Asma Samin, Absal al Nadirin, Asra al Hasibin, and Arham al Rahimin. What you're going to remember? Ears, eyes, numbers, and hugs. Okay? And then a salawat on the Ahlul Bayt. And then you tell him, there's only something you can give me, and I want freedom from the fire, which means a total freedom from agitation. I know um, there's a beautiful dua that says, Ya Allah, I want not to want. You think about it. I want not to want. You think you can you can think about that? And maybe next Thursday we'll talk about Arafa, Ma Arifa, and how we get to use the day of Arafa to think about ourselves. I'd like to end in the Zulhijjah bit about a beautiful poem. The teacher of mine once taught me. It's from Alama Iqbal, he's an Urdu poet. And in Urdu he says, Khudi ko kar buland itna ke har takdeer se pehle khuda bande se khud puche bata teri raza kya hai. I translate it. He says, very rough translation. Increase your selflessness to such heights, that means get so close to Allah by being so selfless, that before creating each destiny for you, Allah would have to ask you, what is your opinion about this? Okay, 
So inshallah next week we will look at the day of Arafah. But now we gotta go to the A to Z of Islam. Do you remember at the A to Z? A was for Allah. B is for the best. C, yes you're right. Charity. D, Dua. Okay. E, ethics. And we spent two weeks on it if you remember. Last week we talked about mom. You remember that? Yes. So that's ethics. And the, today we're going to look at F. F is for furu. Every time you go to a madrasa, workshop, wherever you go, you learn about usul and furu. Usul is your the why of religion. So you learn tawheed, adala, nabuwa, imama, qiyama. Tawheed and adala go together. Nabuwa and imama go together. And then there's qiyama. In other words, tawheed is the oneness of Allah. Being your best, reaching your full potential by believing in him and following his instructions. How do you follow his instructions? As Nabuwa and Imama, we have divine guidance. And finally, the last one is Qiyama. In other words, it is accountability. So there's three things that go for Usul. But here, now how does it manifest itself? If we believe, then it must show in some way. You can't just say, well, I believe and then do nothing. It doesn't work like that. So these are the ten branches, and we call them furu din the branches of religion. First one, salah. You all know. Akim is salah. Wa'atu zakah. Quran continually say that. Establish salah. It doesn't say just pray salah. It said make it, establish it in your life. The next one is psalm. We all know about psalm. Fasting in the month of Ramadan, and we just did that. The third one is hajj. Hajj is going on a pilgrimage, and this year we can't go, but we've talked about it, how the Prophet said, Hajj is Arafah. By reciting that Salah, we get the Thawab of Hajj. By reciting Surah Al-Fajr, even that is forgiveness of sins, which we look for in Hajj to start again. And so that's the pilgrimage. The fourth one is Zakah. Zakah actually means growth and increase. So Alama Tabatabai actually says it's purification purification of your wealth or whatever you own by giving but there's a fiqh zakah there's zakat al-fitr that you give on eid obviously on eid al-fitr but zakah in the fiqh terms is on nine things the three c's as i call them right so the first c is coins you have gold and silver it's not just coins it's gold and silver the second c is um, crops so you have wheat and barley and dates and raisins. And then it's cattle, which is camels and cows and goat and sheep. If you don't have them, zakah is still there. It's a part of absolutely everything you have. To be able to purify it, to give zakah. That is why Allah says, Akim is salah wa zakah. Establish salah and the manifestation of your salah is zakah. Anyway, we'll talk about it at some other time. The fifth one is kums. Giving one-fifth of your savings. So maybe you can read up about it. The sixth one is jihad. And my goodness, people get so worked up about that word. It literally means to try hard, to strive hard, to be your best, to reach your full potential. The seventh one is amr bil ma'aruf. It's literally a reminder to do good, to make sure everybody participates. Then you have nahyan il munkar. So in other words, encouraging people to do good and then discouraging them to do evil. But we've got to do that first to ourselves before we tell anybody else. Oh, and the last, nine and ten. Tawalla and Tabarra. Tawalla, I mean, if you look at Surah number 42, Ayah 23, Allah says, Muhammad, tell them, I don't want anything from you except love of my near ones. But in essence, it's to love the Ahlul Bayt, those who love them. But in other words, to, to fly towards, to strive, to go towards that, which is goodness itself. And Tabarra is to run away from that, to run away from those who oppose the Ahlul Bayt, basically because they didn't do right. In Surah number 60, Mumtahana, I think, Ayah 1, Allah says, Ya ayyuhalladina amanu, O you who believe, la tattakhizu aduwi wa aduwukum awliya. Don't take my enemy and your enemies as your friends. And who are enemies? Those who are unjust. So literally gone through these 10 things quite quickly. We should look at them in detail in some time, but at least learn the 10, at least you know some basics about them. So that in essence is the F of Furu. Inshallah, next week we will look at G and G's agenda. That's a difficult word, isn't it? But we'll look at it. But now I'd like to go to Surah Al-Waqiyah. Remember what I said? On the night of Thursday, there are many recommendations. One of them is Surah Yasin, and we've looked at that. But today we will look at Surah Al-Waqiyah. So if you have your Surah Al-Waqiyahs, we looked at the first two sections. 
and today we will look at the third section but let me go over it again because repetition is good and we need to remind ourselves so 96 ayah the tamaki surah one who recites surah al-waqiyah will be loved by allah and people it's safety from sadness from poverty from misfortunes and dedicated to Imam Ali. so you will be in his company if you recite surah al-waqiyah it's also forgiveness of sins and if you want lots of sustenance, recite it the number of times according to the lunar calendar. I mean, today is an idle time to recite it. If for you it's the first of the Hajjah, recite it once. As you go along the days, you're going to recite it a lot more times. So recite it today. And one who recites it is never afflicted by need. Never need. Isn't it wonderful? Okay. Remember the dua I said, I want not to want. It's a beautiful dua. Anyway. And when the last ayah was revealed, the Prophet said, put it in your ruku. That's right. So when we come to it, we'll talk about it. In essence, it's sort of an extension of Surah Al-Rahman. So we divided it into seven sections. If you remember, we looked at the first section where there were three groups of people. Do you remember the groups of people that were there? You think you can tell me who they were? What did Allah say? Who are the groups? Do you know that? Okay. The amazing companions of the right. Okay, remember what he says? Fashabul Maimana, Ma Ashabul Maimana. Then there was all oh, the unfortunate people of the left. Was Habul Mashama, Ma Ashabul Mashama. They were really unfortunate. And then was Sabikun as Sabikun. The awesome, foremost, successful winners who excelled in the world and are close to divinity. That means they could the best in the world and in the hereafter. It's not that they gave up anything. They were phenomenal people. So we looked at those three people. Last week, we looked at section two, which was Ayah 12 to 40. And we look, looked at the reward of Jannah for the awesome winners and the amazing companions of the right. Remember, we had the two levels of Jannah and we looked at both of them. It was phenomenal. This week's not as good. That's section three. And this section is about the unfortunate people you know the people of the left who denied accountability they knew but they didn't want to be accountable they denied Allah they denied guidance and they denied accountability and we're talking about what's going to happen to them and it's a graphic depiction it's really graphic of the punishment of those who when when you deny divinity you're actually horrible to human beings you're unjust now, so let's see what Allah says. So this is ayah 41 to 56. Let's look at it. He says, When oh, you read this, I mean, your hair stands on end. And I, I don't like it. It really scares me. So he says, And those of the left hand, How awful are the people of the left hand? They will be in this, in this poisonous wind. Wahamim and hot boiling water. Because that's what they did to people. They hurt creation like that. My goodness. And the shade they will have will be of black smoke. So you know, people in the desert looked for shade, but here there'll be no shade. It'll be choking, it'll be dark smoke. La wala karim. It will not be cool and it'll be not nice at all before this they were mutrafin so a mutraf itraf is being wasteful a mutraf is someone who is not only wasteful shows off his wealth and doesn't think about anybody else just thinks about himself or herself doesn't matter what's happening to anybody else he or she just doesn't care so Allah says that's what they were like and they continued, they persisted in the biggest of sins, which is shirk. Shirk is associating somebody with Allah. And when you do that, you really don't care about anybody else. A manifestation of believing in Allah is also believing that all humanity is part of a big family and that you care for everyone. And they didn't care about anything. You know what they used to say? And you, when, when they were told, what are you doing? It's wrong. Wakanu. Yaquluna, they used to say, Aidamitna, wa kunna turaba, wa idaman, aina lamabuthun. What? 
We're going to die, and we're going to die. When we, become di when we die, we're going to become dust and burns. You mean we're going to be raised? Even our forefathers, they're going to be raised? And Allah says, قُلْ إِنَّ الْأَوَّلِينَ وَالْآخَرِينَ the first and the last, all of you will be laid, raised. And then what's going to happen? La majmu'una, you will all be gathered together. It comes from the word jama'a. La majmu'un, can you see? Ila mikati yawmin ma'lum, at an appointed hour on a known day. Now it gets scary. Look what he says. Thumma innakum ayyuhadhaalluna al-muqadhibun. Then you who went away from the straight path, those who lied, that means you didn't believe in being good to human beings. You didn't want to believe in God. You didn't want to be righteous. You will eat of the tree of zakum. And it is said it's like it feels like thorns in your mouth and your and your throat and everywhere. It's awful. And then it says, Famali una min halbutun. And it will fill your stomachs. And you know sometimes when you eat something that doesn't have a good taste, you want to drink something cold and something that will take that taste away. But he says, فَشَارِبُونَ عَلَيْهَا مِنَ الْحَمِيمِ You will just drink boiling water. Make it worse. فَشَارِبُونَ شُرْبَ الْحِيمِ You will drink like the thirsty camel drinks and you just won't feel satiated because that's what you did to other people. It's really hard. هَذَا نُزُلُهُمْ يَوْمَ الدِّينِ this is what will happen to you on the day of Qiyamah. Now these warnings are there for you and me to take and to change. To stop being wasteful, to stop showing off, to help other people, to believe. And that's what makes you who you are, a good person, a good Muslim. Okay, so if you've got Surah Al-Waqiyah, let's read it from here, from the beginning right up to Ayah 56. Can you recite it with me please? Let's go, come on. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Iza waqa'at al-waqi'a, laysa li waqa'atiha kathiba. Khafidhatu al-rafi'a, iza rujjat al-ard rajja, wa bussat al-jibal bassa. Fakanat haba'an mumbatha, wa kuntum mazwajan thalatha. فأصحاب الميمنة ما أصحاب الميمنة وأصحاب المشعمة ما أصحاب المشعمة والسابقون السابقون أولئك المقربون في جنات النعيم ثلة من الأولين وقليل من الآخرين على سرر موضونة متكئين عليها متقابلين يتوف عليهم ولدان مخلدون بأكواب وعباريك وكعس من معين لا يصدعون عنها ولا ينزفون وفاكهة مما يتخيرون ولحم تير مما يشتهون وهور عين كمثال اللؤلؤ المكنون جزاء بما كانوا يعملون لا يسمعون فيها لغوا ولا تعثيما إلا قيلا سلاما سلاما وأصحاب اليمين مع أصحاب اليمين في سدر مخضود وتلهم منضود وذل ممدود وماء مسكوب وفاكهة كثيرة لا مقطوعة ولا ممنوعة وفرش مرفوعة إنا أنشعناهن إن شاء فجعلناهن أبكارا قربا نترابا لأصحاب اليمين ثلة من الأولين وثلة من الآخرين وأصحاب الشمال ما أصحاب الشمال في سموم وحميم وذل من يحموم 
لا بارد ولا كريم إنهم كانوا قبل ذلك مترفين وكانوا يسرون على الهنث العظيم وكانوا يقولون أيذا متنا وكنا ترابا وإذا من أئنا لمبعوثون أو آباؤنا الأولون قل إن الأولين والآخرين لمجموعون إلى ميقات يوم معلوم ثم إنكم أيها الظالون المكذبون لآكلون من شجر من زكوم فمالون منها البتون فشاربون عليه من الحميم فشاربون شرب الهيم هذا نزلهم يوم الدين صدق الله العلي العظيم وصدق الرسول الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين so let's recite the surah al-fatiha for all the marhumin especially those of your family for those who are ill for those who are in trouble let's recite the dua for protection and the ziyara of imam hussein you ready bismillahir rahmanir rahim alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin arrahmanir rahim Malik Yawmiddin Iyaka na'abudu wa iyaka nasta'in Ihdina al-sirat al-mustaqim Sirat al-lazina an'amta alayhim Ghayri al-maghdubi alayhim Walad-dhalin Close your eyes, ask Allah to give the thawab to all the marhumin Especially those of your family Pray for those who are ill And pray for those who are in trouble Bi khamsatun utfi biha حر الوباء الحاتمة المستفى والمرتضى وأبناهما والفاتمة السلام عليك يا عبا عبد الله وعلى الأرواه التي هلت بفنائك عليك مني سلام الله أبدا ما بقيت وبقي الليل والنار ولا جعله الله آخر الأحد مني لزيارتكم السلام على الحسين وعلى لي ابن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد في أمان الله الكريم let us pray to Allah سبحانه وتعالى to make us of those who are forgiven in these 10 days and for us to reach our full potential ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم